Deuteronomy, chapter number one, verse number six. And it simply says, look, I've given you this land. Go in and take it. All right. The word of the Lord is blessed. Talk, doctor. For a few moments. On today, I want to dialogue with you from the subject from land to legacy. From land to legacy. And for a thing. I want to give you this thing. Simply tell your neighbor, take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Tell your other neighbor, say, take it. This week, many of us became aware. And we are even able to view the body camera footage related to the murder of Sonia Massey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Reverend Slater, she was a woman from my home state, Illinois. And she simply called the police because she was worried about Prowler outside her house. But she ended up being a victim of police brutality. In addition to this issue, we witnessed our president Joe Biden announced that he will not seek re-election. In him doing this, we see that Vice President Kamala B. Harris has emerged as the likely candidate for the Democratic Party. And she is poised to run against the one and only former president, Donald J. Trump, in our November elections. My brothers and my sisters, it's clear that we got some issues. And despite the challenges that we face in our community, in our lives, in our jobs, and even in our church, we are still called to serve Almighty God. We are called to serve God in a world full of deception, in a world full of hardships, in a world full of injustices and turmoil. But let me say that. As we embrace this calling, we must be careful not to become so consumed with what is happening around us that we lose sight of God and the promises that he has bestowed upon us. Are y'all with me up in here, up in here on today? We need to understand on today that we must continue to prepare ourselves even when we feel distracted. We must prepare ourselves, Elder Hill, even when we think that we've been overlooked. We must prepare ourselves even when life tends to overwhelm us. And we must stay prepared and be prepared even when we don't feel motivated to do so. 
to make sure the people that we serve have tangible opportunities to grow within the land. We should not be holding nobody back. But we have to be, if, we, if we're going to provide tangible opportunity, David, we have to be tangible evidence of the promise. Come on now. Amen. Our lives to serve as a witness to the goodness and the grace of Almighty God. But see, as we seek to provide tangible evidence of these opportunities within the land, we have to understand that as we provide this tangible evidence, it reinforces our understanding that we are not called to mishandle the promise. I know I'm saying something over here. We are not called to mishandle the promise. God did not call you out of darkness into his light and call you into ministry to mishandle the promise. He also didn't call us out of darkness into his light to neglect the promise. And he did not call us to take advantage of the people we were called to take care of. But we are mandated by God, Deacon Woods, to fully, somebody say fully, fully embrace the opportunities and the potential that the land offers us and it offers those we serve no good. Amen? But as we discussed before, our call is to be possessors of the promise. And these promises, let me tell you something, they don't belong to us. Amen. Amen. Talk about it. They are the property of Almighty God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And as possessors of the promise, it is our instructions or mandate to diligently invest in people. It got quiet. It's our job to invest in the people inside HMBC and outside of HMBC. Clearly, Sister Regina, we need to begin to have an outside focus when it comes to the promise. Amen. Somebody missed that. Amen. Our focus is no longer solely what's going on in this church. But if we're going to go and possess the land, we need to get up, go, and possess all that God has for us in our community. I'm going to take my time. But not only are we to invest in the people, because this, this is our training ground. HMBC of the kill is where we train for our service. But not only do we seek to invest in the people, we must also diligently pursue opportunities for us to grow. We shouldn't just be sitting around Sunday evening to Sunday morning. Please pass I'm doing the best I can. We need to be intentionally pursuing growth for ourselves. Say intentionally. We need to be doing this. Say it again. Intentionally. But not only that, we must be seeking to nurture the gifts and the talents within us yes, sir. and within our brothers and our 
sisters. And we have to take advantage. Now, I mean, utilize. Not in a negative way. But we have to take advantage of the opportunities that God has blessed us with every second of every day. Are y'all with me up here? I want you to remember our preparation, our action, and our responsibility in following God's direction are interconnected. All right. What that means, Brother George, is that you can't have one without the other. You can't have preparation if you ain't got no action. You can't have action if you're not responsible and following what God is telling us to do. But see, understand that even though we have this blueprint, that's not going to take away from the chaos of life. We have to learn to navigate the blueprint in the midst of the chaos. We got to navigate the blueprint in the midst of hateration. We have to navigate the blueprint when folks are calling us anything but a child of God. Tell your name, we got to navigate the blueprint. But not only that, you have to understand this one point. On this journey full of chaos, misdirection, and misery, just what you tell me, I'm going along. Because he said, Lo, I want to be like Lo. Lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. No, never alone. No, never alone. See, he promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. I should have heard more than three claps. <laughs> we are not alone. Moses, as we know, he is recognized as the author of this text. We understand from our studies he was born to Hebrew parents during the time when Pharaoh had ordered the death of all newborn Hebrew baby boys. See, by God's grace, Moses was saved when he was placed in a basket on the Nile River and he was adopted by Pharaoh's daughter. Being adopted by Pharaoh's daughter was an avenue that God used to shape his leadership skills as he grew up in the royal household. We understand Mother Williams while tending sheep in Midian, Moses had a life-changing encounter with God through what we call the burning bush. This moment Mark the beginning yeah. of his calling to free the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. See, he returned with some Holy Ghost bones to confront Pharaoh, who was a family member by adoption, and demand the release of his people. As a leader, Moses faced challenges during his Israelite journey to the promised land. 
What I went over there this morning, I said, hey, there's a parking spot. That's a parking spot. That's right. Because there are going to be some challenges that we are going to face with our leadership as we strive to lead God's people to the land flowing with milk and honey. Let it be known. Some of the issues that Moses dealt with was that sometimes the folk just couldn't get along. We don't have that up in here. But sometimes there was some disconnection. Sometimes there was some disagreement. Sometimes there were some problems. He even had to address issues of faith. And he had to manage the complexities of leading a large group of people yes. through a wilderness situation. My God. Mm. Our key term, y'all know it already, for today is take it. Mm. Y'all know I like to preach a small chunk of scripture. So, Elder Kill, tell them folks, tell them take it. I ain't here, Elder Kill. Take it. Take it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the king of Christ is the That's all right, Pastor. I got you, Elder. Appreciate you. But take it. Take it. When I start to look at take it, take it serves as an empowerment, empowering directive. Y'all got that? Yeah. It's a directive that encourages us to make quick and effective decisions as we move to possess the land. It encourages us and it promotes our faithfulness to God and to each other. There must be faithfulness to God beyond the church, right? So it should be faithfulness to God. But there should not be faithfulness to God with the absence of being faithful to one another. Come on now. Talk about it. So it promotes faithfulness to God and faithfulness to one another. Take it. Inspires us to act with purpose and conviction in our daily living. See, it reminds us that faith is not just the belief, but it's also about taking proactive steps toward fulfilling God's divine purpose for our lives. This directive, it encourages us, Hope Missionary Baptist Church, to seize opportunities for growth. To take advantage of opportunities to serve. To take advantage of opportunities to grow our leadership and show our leadership. And we, and we do this by reflecting on the qualities that Moses demonstrated through his journey. In practice, Take it causes us to recognize the moments that when we are challenged and when we are called to step out of our comfort zones, just like Moses, that we put our faith in God. Like I told you before, there are going to be some struggles, but put your faith in Almighty God. Everybody ain't going to like you. Put your faith in the Almighty God. We're going to fall down sometimes. But get up. But keep your faith in God. Ultimately, my brothers and my sisters, when we look at the term It encourages us 
in the midst of all that we go through to continue to live boldly, to serve Deacon Smith selflessly, and to simply follow God's lead with confidence because we know that it's God before us. Who can be against us? HBC, it is my desire. You hear me, David? It's my desire mm -hmm. that we just don't hear this message on today, July 28th, 2024, and leave it here. But I want you to take this message. Allow this message from God to shape your decisions. Allow this message from God to influence our actions and it promote the development of a deeper connection with our God. And it helps to grow our faith in God and our connection with one another. With all of this said, how can we faithfully embrace God's promises and influence our community while promoting stewardship and love for all people? Point number one. We must be intentional mm -hmm. about investing in people. Mm -hmm. If we're going to possess the land, Sister Pat, you hear me? Yes. We have to be intentional yeah. about investing in people. Mm -hmm. As those yeah. chosen by God, and, and by the mere fact that you're here, You've been chosen by God to enter and take possession of the promised land. But we have to recognize that we have a responsibility for the right when we go into the promised land. We can't let the weeds take over. We can't let the grass be uncut. We got to plant some flowers. Make it look neat and perfect. But we have some responsibilities to take care of the land. What I'm trying to say is we have to take care of the promises that God has bestowed upon us. It is not only our responsibility, Sister Rose Frank, to be stewards of this land. But we, I want you all to hear me. It is our mandate to make sure that we take care of the land so that we can use it. And so that these children here can use it next. It is our call to leave these babies in abundance That's right. when it comes to the things of God. So it is our responsibility today to do what we need to do to take care of every single promise that God has bestowed upon us. To promote abundance. Hey. Rooted in God's promise. We must prioritize building genuine, authentic relationships with others. Jesus emphasizes in Matthew 22 that the greatest command 
is to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and mind. Y'all beat me. However, he also reminds us, Reverend Slater, of the second commandment, which is equally important. We are to love one another as we love ourselves. I'm going to let that marinate. I'm going to let that marinate a little bit. Sister Monique, we are to love each other with the same love we want in return. And we do that by fostering or growing or promoting real, genuine relationships. Amen. What does that look like? Ray, I'm glad you asked. See, <laughs> what that means is that we have to have authentic relationships outside of the church. Amen. Amen. They got quiet. Amen. That means we got to spend some time loving on one another outside of the church. We got to spend some time in fellowship getting to know one another outside of the church. We don't know one another because we don't spend time with one another. But our mandate, if we're going to possess the land, if we're going to do what God has called us to do, is build authentic relationships with one another. And we must be intentional about our investment in one another. Point number two. And those who have been anointed by God, we understand that it is our job to nurture and encourage faithfulness yes. and fruitfulness yes. in our community. All right. Let, me, let me say something about anointed folks. Ha. <laughs> anointed folks let me check my notes. Are not anointed just to tell folks they are anointed. Oh, somebody missed that. I'm anointed. God has gifted me. Don't tell me, show me. But anointed folks, think it was, were not anointed by God just to tell folks that they were anointed. Those who were anointed by God are anointed for a reason. Our purpose in the promised land is to pursue, develop, you know I mean? and encourage faithfulness to God. I'm going to rewind that. Our purpose, I want somebody to take some notes. Our purpose in the land is to pursue, develop, and encourage faithfulness to God as well as, as, well as to promote fruitful efforts for one another. Come on now. Anointed folks, as we said, don't just run around telling folks they're anointed. But there's some action required with your anointing. There's some godly action, let me get that straight, required with our anointing. Our anointing is from God for His glory, not ours. And we should be using the anointing that God has given us to make the best of our church in our communities. Galatians chapter 5, this is a familiar passage, tells us that the fruit of the Spirit 
are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Am I in the book? Yes, yes. A can be seen. As we intentionally seek to possess the land and create a legacy of grace, because as we possess, we will create the legacy. Yes. We must find active ways to contribute not only to HMBC, but we must be looking for ways to contribute to all the surrounding areas. Tell your neighbor there's work to do. We should recognize the faithfulness and fruitfulness they, they are a result of us being intentional about the care we show we are in the community. So point number one, we must be intentional about investing in people. Point number two, we must be intentional about cultivating faithfulness and fruitfulness in our church and in the community. But last, but most certainly not least, as those selected to occupy the land flowing with milk and honey, All right. it is our job not to be jealous of, but to nurture the gifts and talents of those who have also been called to serve. Come on now, talk about it. Well, well, well. I'm almost done. But as we embrace all that God has blessed us with, and God has blessed us yes, he has. exceedingly, yes, he has. abundantly, above yes, all that we can ask for think. Somebody say overflow. Oh, but as we embrace all that God has blessed us with. We must learn to utilize our individual and collect the resources to advance the kingdom. Somebody ain't like that. <laughs> we, have to, we have to collectively use our resource, our time, our talent, and our treasures to seek to advance the kingdom even in the midst of the chaos that's going around us. Amen. The Apostle Peter, he reminds us in 1 Peter 4 verse 10 that each of us should use the gifts that we have received from God to serve one another. We do this because we have been called to be faithful stewards of God's grace in its different forms. On today, I want to challenge us to think about our God-given skill set. Because we've all been gifted to do something. So I want you to think about as you leave here. Think about the skill sets. Think about the talents that God has blessed you with. And find a way for us to utilize those talents individually and collectively to glorify God in this place and in the community. So as we move, from land to legacy, I think I hit the train coming. We must invest in people. We do our best to cultivate faithfulness and fruitfulness in our communities. We seek to nurture not only our gifts and talents, 
but the gifts and talents of all God's people. And when we do this, it stimulates kingdom growth. I want us to understand possessing the land it's not about claiming the land in a traditional sense. Come on now. Talk about it. Instead, it's about the people of God All right. cultivating hope, Amen. stewardship, and justice in our church and in our world. See, the songwriter said to my young people, serve the Lord in the days of your youth. Learn his law and accept his truth. Sing his praises with the ready tongue while the heart is still young. See, my brothers and my sisters, as we grow in trees of righteousness, we must grasp his teachings and acknowledge his truth. As we seek to expand God's kingdom, we must grasp his teachings and acknowledge his truth. If our goal is to be fruitful, if our goal is to be faithful, we must grasp his teachings and we must acknowledge his truth as we deepen our roots in his love, as we strive to reflect his glory in the way we live. If we desire to walk in his ways and build with integrity, we must grasp his teachings and acknowledge his truth. If our mission is to serve others with compassion and serve them with love as we build our lives on the foundation of his truth as we nurture the seeds of faith that God has planted within us we must grasp his teachings and acknowledge his truth see the songwriter says living for Jesus a life that is true I'm striving to please my Lord in all that I do yielding allegiance Black hearted and free. This is the pathway to blessings for me. If we're going to move, when God said move, we must embrace a Christ centered life. If we we're going to go, when God said go, we must embrace a Christ centered life. If we're going to flow, like God wants us to flow, we must embrace a Christ centered life if we're going to take hold of all of God's promises. We must embrace a Christ centered life. My brothers and my sisters, see the thoughts I say, unless you call on them and all, bound for the promised land, the grace of God upon me. The Bible in my hand. See, in this land, I try. Try sinner. Come to God. Tell your neighbor I'm on the battlefield. But my Lord, if we're going to conquer the giants that dwell in the land, we must be ready for the battle. If we're going to fight the good fight of faith, we must be ready for the battle. See, there's going to be some struggle. We're going to be lied on. We're going to be talked about. Folks are trying to run us away. But Sister Patty, we must be ready for the battle. There will be discouragement. We will find ourselves abandoned. And all alone, there will be brokenness, and there will be despair. But God, we must be ready for that battle. My brothers and my sisters, there will be rejection. There will be moments when you doubt yourself. 
filthy people who don't understand our intentions. It doesn't matter what they think. We must be ready to talk about it. Along the way, we will encounter obstacles. We may feel weary when we're trying to do well. There will be times of frustration, but we can't give up. We must be ready for the battle. Sometimes we may struggle with our faith. Sometimes challenges will arise. Sometimes there will be tests and there will be trials. And don't give up. We must be ready for the battle. See, the songwriter said, Body fire, clean. The morning comes when the saints of God are gathered home. See, we'll tell the story of how we overcome and we'll understand it better by and by as we seek to possess the land. There will be struggle. But see, in the fullness of time, understanding to the words as we seek to take hold of the promises. Folk will rise up against us. But in the fullness of time, understanding will emerge as we seek to be disciples. There will be opposition in the fullness of time. Understanding will emerge as we strive to mentor the next generation. There will be pushback and there will be setback. But in the fullness of time, understanding will emerge. Oh, but there's victory in Jesus. The thought by the soul be my savior forever. He sought me, he brought me with his redeeming glory. He loved me before I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plugged an empty thing into victory beneath his cleansing blood. We got joy in the midst of our sorrow. See, we're moving from the land to our legacy. We got peace in the midst of chaos. We're moving from the land to our legacy. We have focus even when our vision is blurred. We are moving from the land to our legacy. We can't be moved even when we're being pushed away. We're moving from the land into our legacy. The songwriter says, ain't nothing gonna break our strap. Nobody is gonna hold us down because we got to keep on moving. In the midst of despair, keep on moving. We're gonna make some mistakes. Keep on moving. If I gotta serve, all alone, keep moving. When we feel like giving up, keep moving. The strength will take us, keep moving. When I feel tested, keep moving. All I gotta do is hold up to his hand. God will save me here. Feel our hope will save me here. And hold the God unchanging hand. We're moving from the land to creating a legacy. And how do we do that? Number one, we must be intentional about investing in the people. Point number two, we must be intentional about cultivating faithfulness and fruitfulness in our church and in the community. Last but not least, point 
point number three. I want you to know, without a doubt, without a doubt, is to nurture the gifts and the talents of those that God has come to serve. I'm about to take my seat. But Freddie, Freddie, I want you to understand something. As we move from the land into our legacy, there are going to be struggles. There are going to be trouble. Freddie, we're going to face false accusations. There will be those who speak all manner of evil against us. There will, there will be those that will start with you but won't end with you. There are going to be some folks that try to take you down there will be obstacles and there will be hills that we have to climb but the song writer says Father along we'll know all about it Father along we'll understand why Zero. My brother, don't live in the darkness, but live in the sunshine. And that sunshine radiates from the Son of God. And no matter what you go through, no matter what mistakes you make, no matter what it looks like, no matter what the struggle is, We'll understand it better. All by and by. We're moving from the land to embrace a legacy. This legacy was put in place in millennium past. So it's our mandate to take hold of the blessings. Remember that we are custodians of hope. And we are responsible for the maintenance and the upkeep. But now we understand not only are we responsible for the maintenance and the upkeep, we're responsible for one another. So don't give up. Take your neighbor say, don't give up. Take your other neighbor say, don't throw in the towel. And I want you to look up the glory and say, take it. <laughs>